Yep, something came up this week. Something new. Yeah, a Canadian snowstorm. Okay, but thank God we also have Cubase 10 that just came out. So there you go, Cubase 10 is out. Now, I'm not gonna do a full review of Cubase 10, going through all of the features. Um, there's a bunch of videos out there that already did that, uh, which are pretty good actually. But what I'm gonna do is to give you five reasons why you should upgrade to Cubase 10. Basically, my favorite features out of this new update. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I bought the update from my own pocket when it came out, and I had a chance to work with Cubase 10 since then. Now, what I want you guys to do is to give me your opinion on this new update of Cubase. I want you guys to leave in the comment section below what are your favorite features out of this update, if you updated to Cubase 10 yet, or if you're planning on doing it. And also, if you think this update is worth it or not, okay? Leave all of your comments, positive or negative, I don't care. Leave everything down below in the comment section. And again, if you're new here on this channel, subscribe to the channel. And for all of you, don't forget to share and to like this video. All right, so let's jump in. Okay, let's start with the first reason why you should upgrade to Cubase 10 and it's very audio three. And this is actually my favorite feature on the upgrade. So let me show you on the lead vocal here. All right, so the cool thing about Very Audio 3 is that you have access to all the controls without having to switch tools. And this will speed up my workflow when working with Very Audio for sure. In previous versions of Cubase, on the, uh, on the inspector window, we had to switch tools to do our editing. Uh, but now with uh, Cubase 10, this is a thing of the past, which is quite nice. So let's go and take a just a deeper look here we also have like new features uh we can uh we can move the tilt uh the tilt point if we want to you can move the tilt up down and if you click on alt or option it will rotate the tilt okay which is quite nice um then we have the uh we have the quantize pitch accessible directly at the bottom of the segment and same for the pitch curve which is accessible right away uh, we, we can warp in or out our segment pretty easily. And we also have a very cool feature, which is the shift format, uh, which again is pretty cool to create some cool effects. And we have a volume, and now this is pretty nice, a volume that will uh, be applied to the segment, to each individual segment, which is very, very cool. Um, and now my favorite feature out of this uh, new version of Very Audio is the range control. Okay, where we can actually um, select a range at the beginning and the end of each segment. So everything within that range will not be pitch correct, basically. So I'm just going to show you a quick example on how that sounds like. So I'm going to go at the beginning of my uh, event here and select all of those segments. I'm going to bring the pitch curve way down. Okay, so now I'm overdoing it. Now you hear that robotic sound with the uh, transitions when we go from one note to another. Now uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just go back one step and apply a range at the beginning and the end of all those selected segments. Let's try that again, bring the pitch curve way down, and let's listen to that again. I don't know if you noticed that the note transitions, the transitions between all of those segments were way more smoother because of the range that we added. 
Very useful if you're stuck with those types of sound between your transitions. Now adding a bit of range will smooth that up. So this is very audio three. Amazing, love it. Um, this is gonna improve my workflow using this for sure, okay. Now another very cool feature out of, uh, of Cubase 10 is the audio alignment tool, which is very useful, especially for vocals. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna um, time sync all the back vocals with the timing of the lead vocal. I'm gonna select the reference, which will be my lead vocal, and I'm gonna click on plus. Then I'm gonna do the same with the targets, which is gonna be all of my back vocals events. I'm gonna keep the check in match words and prefer time shifting. I'm gonna leave that off. Um, the alignment precision, I'm gonna leave at 100, but if you wanna get a bit less precision on the, the process, so just bring that lower. Now I'm gonna click on align audio. And there you go, you saw all of those files moved a bit. Okay, I'm just gonna go back one step so we can see the difference visually. And there you go, let's have a quick listen. There you go, so it does the job pretty well. So this is what audio alignment do. And this is again, one of my favorite features of the new Cubase 10. Okay, now another reason why you should upgrade to Cubase 10 is the Media Bay. They added the VST effects directly from the Media Bay, which is quite nice. Um, and also what they did is the VST instruments now includes third-party instruments, which was not the case with the old version of Cubase. Um, so I'm gonna come back to this after, but the effects, the VST effects, um, are finally all the effects that you have on your uh, on your system, uh, which are available directly on the media base, so you can just drag and drop them directly on your project. Uh, and also a pretty cool thing here, um, the layout is usually by default, is sorted by category, but now you can sort those by vendor, which is quite nice. Um, and you can also just create your own uh, your, your own folders. Okay, so just click on the same option here and go down to plugin manager and you're gonna have access to uh, some new collections if you wanna create a new collection of your own uh, with your custom, uh, your custom list of plugins that you use when you mix and when you work on your music productions, you'll be able to do it directly from the plugin manager accessible directly from the media bay, uh, which again is quite nice. Uh, so let me give you an example here. I'm gonna go in the, uh, the Stangberg uh, folder and then down to reverb, and we are gonna insert the updated reference reverb. Okay, so let's bring that up into our, um, into our project. And there you go, we have a new effects channel track created right here, and we have our reverence uh, plugin open. Okay, that fast. Or also what you can do is you can click on reverence and you have access to all the presets. You can uh, just take one of them and drag it over and that will create an effects channel track with reverence and the preset directly loaded, which is again a time saver. So this is very cool. Um, now, if you wanna uh, you just add an insert, uh, you can also do so. So let's cl uh, click on the lead vocal right here. And uh, I'm just gonna go back one step go for EQ and we're gonna go and uh, click on Studio EQ. And again, if you wanna have a, a basic look at the presets, you can just click on the EQ itself or the plugin itself and you're gonna, it's gonna show you all the presets available, but I'm just gonna drag the plugin directly on my insert. And there you go, I have my plugin inserted on that track. So it is a very cool way and a very fast way to access uh, plugins and uh, have, having a visual as well of the plugins you have, uh, which is quite nice. So if I click here on the show and hide VST pictures, uh, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a picture of all the plugins, okay, which is quite nice. Um, so you have the option to disable that if you want or just to keep it on if you want to. If you, uh, you're working with a third party plugin, uh, for example, I'm gonna go and select my FabFilter Pro Q2 and um, add this as an insert. 
I'm going to get this windowed my, my plugin basically and I'm going to click on that small camera on top and that will actually um, create a picture, a thumbnail directly on that effect. So this way I can have a visual of that third party plugin effect. So very nice and um, again we have the VST instruments which includes uh, some third-party instruments as well. So I love what they did here with the Media Bay. Very cool feature. I know that um, Studio One has a similar type of thing going on, and people tend to like that a lot. Another reason why you should consider upgrading to Cubase 10 is the new look of the channel strip. Look at that. A very nice look here. Uh, what they did here with the visuals of the channel strip is way more appealing than uh, what we used to have with Cubase 9.5 and below. I know it doesn't change anything to the sound, but with those types of uh, visuals, um, I, you know, I kind of want to work more with the channel strip now. Um, just the fact that it's a bit more efficient to work with and easier to follow. Uh, for example, if we look here at the compressor, the compressor has a netted module which is pretty cool. So if we click on it, we'll get uh, a more closer look on the, uh, the compressor we're working on. So let's uh, choose the standard compressor and this is what we're gonna get. And same for the tube compressor. And this is pretty nice. It does a bit like what we see here with the EQ on the, uh, on the other tab. So uh, we have access to all of those directly from the channel strip which is nice uh, and again you know same as we uh, we had before you can change the order of each modules so i really like what they did with this channel strip now another very good reason why to upgrade to cubase 10 is you can now export aaf files uh, which is amazing, especially if you're doing some collaboration with other studios that are not using Cubase. This is the easiest way to share projects with other collaborators. So to do so, you click on File, you go to Export, and then you'll see uh, just below OMF, which is another way to... Uh, to, to, uh, to export files for a collaboration, but not as advanced as AAF, which is now the standard. Um, so for example, you can select all of the tracks uh, from your project, send that on, on a file, and that will keep everything. You know, it will keep the place, it will keep the, um, and that will keep the placement of your audio events um, and everything. So this is very cool. So you don't need to just uh, bounce all the files from the same start point so everybody's in sync. You just send out your project as is in AAF and the other studio is gonna be able to open it. If you're like me and you collaborate with other studios or musicians uh, or producers, um, this honestly, this is the way to go. Uh, I really like this option and the fact that it's now in Cubase 10. So uh, that's another feature that was brought from Nuendo. So there you go. Those are the five reasons why I think you should consider upgrading to Cubase 10. Now there's way more to cover on this new update of Cubase. There's like amazing, uh, there's other features that are quite amazing, but those features were my top five uh, for my workflow. But now I want to know what are your favorite features. So don't forget to leave your comments down below. Okay, I want to know everything about your favorite features and if you upgraded to Cubase 10 yet or if you're planning on doing it. And also, let me know if you think this update is worth it or not. Okay, so all comments are welcome. All right, so don't forget to share, to like, and again, if you're new to this channel, just subscribe. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.